All right, today, friends, I am here to share my thoughts on Will Smith's autobiography, Will, written by Will Smith and co-written by Mark Manson. Um, You know, I'm sure a lot of people had an interest in Will Smith's story already, but then after the, the, you know, the slap heard around the world, uh, the the famous Oscars moment with, with him and Chris Rock, I'm sure it sparked a lot more interest. It definitely did for me. Um, you know, I've always been a fan of Will Smith's work through the years. Uh, growing up, I had DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince albums. Um, I saw, I, I, I would say 99% of the films that he was in, um, a good portion of them as they came out in the theater. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a 90s kid, so like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and all the films that he started starring in after that, um, it it was a big part of my upbringing, a big part of my youth, and then all the way into adulthood into now, right? Um, very much enjoyed King Richard, which he won the Oscar for. Finally won an Oscar for after years of uh, being nominated but not winning. Uh, but... Uh, This was his story in his own words, and one thing I I definitely like about it, and I like this about all authors who do this, uh, number one, they create an audio version of the book. I feel like that's like a must nowadays anyway. That's like an automatic, right? There's always an audio book, but the absolute best way to do it, and the way to score extra points with me, is when the author, no matter how famous they might be, reads their own audiobook, and Will Smith did just that. And I feel like it, it it makes the book a lot better just because you get all of his inflections, um, his kind of mannerisms, you know, he's chuckling sometimes, he's, you know, audibly upset at times when reading certain parts of his story, and, and you just really get the feeling of everything he's talking about. And uh, he does a lot of cool little interlude stuff in it as well, uh, you know, he actually ends the book with with the remix that he did of Joyner Lucas's song, Will, um, where he did like an extra verse on that, uh, you know, talking about his own life. And I thought that was pretty awesome. I actually, I really liked uh, that verse that he did. Shows that he's still got those hip-hop chops. Um, but let me say that I, I was not... Uh, thrilled with Will Smith after the the slap heard around the world. I was not. I I made a video about it. I I talked about it before. Um, I, you know, thought it was highly inappropriate what he did, man. It just wasn't cool. Um, But I will say, and one of the reasons I I dug into this book and, and was happy that I did is I was trying to gain maybe a little insight into maybe what led up to that, you know? If I could hear his life story, maybe I could figure out a little bit of like, you know, what leads a man to, to act out in this way. And so publicly, after this many years of not acting out like that, you know, um, not getting into any trouble, not, you know, um, and, and I feel like the book definitely, definitely, and I'd say within the first chapter or two of the book gives some serious insight into that. Um, just, just with his feelings of like inadequacy and um, helplessness and uh, inability to defend the women in his life. Like the book goes deep on that. And remember, this was written before the slap heard around the world. This was, this was written, you know, what, a year or two before it is when this book was published. But man, does it not give you some... Uh, some insight into what maybe led him to that, you know, emotionally, um, intellectually, like what, what led to him feeling like that's something he would even do. Um, but I don't want to dwell on just that. Um, I just thought it was, it was quite interesting. And throughout the book, it's a recurring theme in his life that he feels inadequate and he feels, uh, unable to protect and or be enough for the women in his life. Starting from childhood all the way through to, you know, current day. Now, you would think by the end of the book that he's kind of like 
wrestled all those demons, gotten over all that, and, and would not act out in this sort of way. But clearly, you know, everyone is always a work in progress. But let me let me get past that. Let's dig into what the book is. The book covers everything, <laughs> everything about his story. Like I said, from childhood, from working for his father's ice packing company, um, you know, all the way through his his early foray into hip hop, his first hip hop, the first hip hop Grammy award, which went to him and DJ, DJ Jazzy Jeff for parents just don't understand, um, and some some really cool insight that I didn't know was even a part of his story, but. He basically was broke and indebted to the IRS between his kind of uh, the beginning of his rap career, his success with DJ Jazzy Jeff, um, and his foray into acting in The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. He was actually dead broke and kind of like, you know, wasn't sure what was going to happen with his life. Uh, owed the IRS like millions of dollars. And the story, and I'm not going to give it away here, but the story of how he ends up on the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, and and how that show went from an idea to being made in like six months, is incredible, incredible. Um, I, I enjoyed this story. I enjoyed his entire life story, actually, from you know basically about halfway through the run of Fresh Prince of Bel Air, diving into films. Um, you know, his marriage to his first wife, his first couple long-term girlfriends that uh, highly influenced, you know, I feel like the, the, the person that he is today, those relationships um, had a lot to do with the person that, that he became and still is. And his entire career, something like eight number one box office hits in a row. It's unheard of. And it's like, yeah, I remember. I was there. But, like, you just don't, until you put it in perspective later, like, holy shit, it really was. Every movie he put out was gold. Every movie he put out, even if it ended up not being well-received, opening weekend, that thing was number one. Will Smith was the hot commodity. Like, for action, for comedy, for romantic comedies, like, The dude's career has been insane. So it goes through his entire career, you know, his relationships that he formed through the years with Martin Lawrence and uh, James Avery and Quincy Jones and just everyone he came in contact with. Um, His meeting of of Jada, um, their marriage, the kids that they had, his, his child with his first wife, Trey, and how that, like, family dynamic uh, went forward where, you know, he maintained a, a, a amicable, very, actually very close relationship with his first wife, uh, Cherie, and, you know, in order for Trey to feel like he was part of the rest of the family, and it, it's pretty incredible, and just wrestling with how he would handle, like, the schooling of his children while acting nonstop and doing music, and it, it's quite the story of just, like, entertainment domination, but then also uh, emotional hardships, uh, the death of his mother and father, and, and and just everything that he went through through his entire career up until now in his fifties. And you know he's still going. There's no stopping Will Smith. I, even with the slap and everything, I feel like he's going to continue on. That's not going to end him in any way. Um, but. Definitely, I think there'll be a, a, a cooling off period that we're going to experience for the next couple of years and slowly get his way back. And, and I don't think it's going to stop the box office. People are still going to see his films. Um, and why not? He's fantastic. He's a super talented individual. Um, but yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed the book. I thought it was really great. Like I said, the audio book is probably even better. I mean, that's the one that I listened to. I did not read the book. I listened to it. And I feel like that's the way to take this story in, is hearing the man himself explain to you what his life was like. Um, yeah. So those are kind of my thoughts on the book. I, I really enjoyed the book. It gave me some, some definite insight into his past and current behaviors and just made me realize, like, God damn, what a, what a, like, he was 
an even bigger star than I recognized, even though I was watching those number one hits come out over and over and going to see them in the theater. I remember seeing Independence Day several times the summer that it came out. Um, and the same thing with every one of his films. I saw him in the theater, like, for... I'd say those eight films, I saw him in the theater. It was like uh, Men in Black, Bad Boys, Bad Boys 2, Men in Black 2, um, Ali. Like, these... I, I love these films, and I was seeing them as they came out. Anyway, um, thoroughly enjoyed the book. Uh, I'd love to hear what you guys thought if you read it. Uh, I, I, like I said, I wasn't really interested in reading the book until the, the Chris Rock incident happened. And then after that, I would like actually I, I was probably kind of interested in it before the Chris Rock in- incident happened, and then not interested at all right after it happened. I was kind of like, man, what a dick, you know? Like I don't I don't care about this guy's life story. Like yeah, it's inexcusable. Um, but after some some cooling off time, I'm like, you know what? I think I do kind of want to dig into this guy's life, and um, I'm glad that I did because I thoroughly enjoyed the book. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, but like I said. Uh, I, I recommend it to anyone that's interested at all in, in Will Smith's life and career, and um, especially people that grew up with him as part of their lives, like I did. Um, but yeah, go check it out. And if you've already checked it out, I'd love to hear what you think uh, about some of the insights in this book, uh, what you gleaned from it. If you got kind of the same impression that I did about his his uh, the person that he's become. You know, the book also digs into his. Uh, uh, ayahuasca experiences later in his life, like in his 50s, like not that long ago. Um, and, and that was uh, one of my favorite parts of the book. So yeah, l- let me know what you think in the comments below, or you can reach out on Instagram or Twitter at Real Brett Scott, uh, and let me know what you think. Uh, very responsive. Uh, so if, if you talk to me over there, I will talk back. And if you're enjoying this video or podcast, uh, and you like stuff like this, where I talk about entertainment and pop culture, then please subscribe to the channel or favorite or follow the podcast. And if you decide to do that and stick around and give me a chance, then I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Thanks.